So I have a ham bone in here with some chopped up ham ready to go. The ham bone is still a little frozen. Um, this is a ham that I had in my freezer. And then I'm putting a whole bag, about uh, a pound, 16 ounces of split peas in. We're going to need eight cups of water. We're also gonna add two medium potatoes cubed. All right, I have a very large onion chopped that's going in here. And two medium carrots. Probably about a half cup of celery. Five teaspoons of chicken um, bouillon granules, basically. Gonna need a teaspoon of marjoram. This really makes it, you guys. I've had it without, and for something about this marjoram, it just makes it. A teaspoon of poultry seasoning. About two teaspoons of sage. Half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. And a half a teaspoon of basil, dried basil. All right, I'm gonna mix this as best as I can. And I'll tell you the truth, this is the first time I'm doing this in the slow cooker, but I know it's gonna turn out great. So I'm just gonna keep it on low for six to eight hours. I'll check on it at six hours and see where we're at. But I know that the split peas are the thing that you want cooked uh, in the potatoes, but I know the potatoes are gonna cook faster probably than the split pea. We just wanna get that pea cooked good. Oh, this is gonna smell so good. I'm gonna put the cover on and just let it do its thing. All right, this is done. Oh, the house smells amazing. Look at this, it's creamy, the peas are creamy, the potatoes are perfect. Mmm, would you look at that? And I have rolls in the oven waiting for us. Recipe, I'm gonna show you a Hawaiian barbecue chicken that we're gonna make sandwiches with. And it is from the cookbook, the Full Proof Family Slow Cooker Cookbook. I'll leave a link down below. It is awesome. Next, we're gonna mix the sauce that's going to go on top of the chicken, and you're gonna need brown sugar, garlic, pineapple juice, but I'm using the juice from these pineapple tidbits, and I'm also making a side dish to go with it that has pineapple, so I'm gonna use that. Uh, sesame seed oil, ketchup, ginger, you can use fresh ground ginger, but I have this in my fridge, soy sauce, and barbecue sauce. Okay, so use any barbecue sauce that you like. In her cookbook, she likes to use the Kinder Mild barbecue sauce, but I have down in my food storage room this Kraft Original, and this is the first one that I need to use up according to the expiration date. So that's why we're using this. And I actually really like the Kraft Original. I love Sweet BB Rays though, I mean, seriously, but this one does really well. We're gonna need a half a cup of the pineapple juice. And we're gonna need a fourth a cup of ketchup. And you'll also need a fourth a cup of soy sauce, a tablespoon of brown sugar, a teaspoon of the sesame seed oil, and you'll need a teaspoon of minced garlic. I did have this ginger, but I don't know. I haven't made this recipe before. <sighs> I don't know if I should use this, but it asks for ground ginger, and that is that. So. Maybe I'll just follow the recipe exactly. And you'll need a half a teaspoon of the ground ginger. We're gonna whisk this together. It smells really good. That sesame seed oil, oh my gosh, I love the smell of that. Mmm, it smells so good. So now that we have our mixture for this recipe, we're gonna put this in the bottom of our slow cooker first. All right, we're going to pour the remaining sauce over the chicken, and then we're gonna chop up some red onion and sprinkle that on top, about a half cup. All right, let's sprinkle that red onion on top. Mm, I love red onion. This is gonna make your house smell insane because right now mine smells so good and it's not even cooking yet. All right, I'm gonna cover this, and this is gonna cook on low for five to six hours. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on an orange jello salad and a coleslaw. Oh, smells so good. Mmm, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna come right 
off. I'm gonna shred this up outside of here because it's very liquidy. And I'm, I have my oven on broil and we're going to toast up some buns. Okay, put as many as you need on, put it under the broiler, crisp them up a bit and then we'll get the chicken on it and some cheese. So I shredded this up and I'm adding the sauce in. It's gonna, the sauce is gonna be absorbed in that chicken. Oh my gosh, this is so good. The flavor is amazing. I have some toasted buns here that went under the broiler. I'm going to put some of this chicken down. Here I have some provolone cheese. So I'm gonna do two with provolone cheese on top, put that back under the broiler and get it all melty, and then I'll show you what I do next. Oh, look at that melty cheese on top, yum. All right, I'm just topping it with the coleslaw and then putting its lid on. Look at that. I've seen other Hawaiian chicken sandwiches where they put uh, a round piece of pineapple and a piece of ham with the chicken. Look at that. I made one of our favorite summer like fruit dessert salads, which is our orange jello salad. I left a recipe down below for you guys. It's Cool Whip cottage cheese pineapple and mandarin oranges in orange jello. I'm serving it up with some mini cucumbers and ranch tonight. We had a late lunch, so we're keeping it pretty chill. And that is our dinner tonight. Oh, so good, you guys. For this corned beef and cabbage recipe, um, you can use anywhere from three to four pounds of corned beef. But this package I got is like just two pounds, 40 ounces. Um, there's, everyone's pretty much gone today for dinner. So this small one is gonna work out really good. I do have another one in my refrigerator to cook at another time. All right, before we put our corned beef in, I almost put it in first, we're gonna place the bottom with potatoes. You can use any potatoes you want, baby potatoes, red potatoes, this is a good old normal russet potato. I'm gonna add some carrots. As many as you think your family's gonna eat. This is really not, in my mind, measurable. I just go off what I know what we'll eat. And then onions, you can use frozen pearl onions if you want. All right, we'll place our corned beef on top. Like I said, I have another big guy downstairs, but we're gonna do that later. I think I might cook that one up next time in the Instapot and I'll share it with you. I have some beer that I keep downstairs that I use for beef stew and the corned beef. So I'm going to do some of this. I'm going to use this bottle of beer and then I'm going to add some water in. And a cup of water. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle on the seasoning that came with it, the seasoning packet. Okay, I'm also gonna put a few cloves of garlic in here. Just gonna mince that in. I'm doing three cloves, I love garlic. You can't go wrong with it at all. I'm staying away from the salt though. I'm definitely not gonna add salt. Okay, I'm gonna add a bay leaf in there as well. Now we're gonna add the cabbage on its last hour of cooking. So I'm gonna let it cook on high for seven hours, and then the last hour we'll put in the cabbage. Now, that is seven hours for a three to four pounder. This is smaller, so I will be keeping an eye. I'm gonna actually check it at six hours and see how we're looking. Okay, this has been going for six hours, and the house smells amazing. So I took some cabbage and quartered it and all that fun stuff and now I'm just going to get it on top here. Okay, I'm just gonna season the top a little with some salt and pepper, not a lot of salt. All right, I'm gonna let this go for another hour with the lid on. We're gonna cook the cabbage, we're almost done. All right, it's been an hour. Oh, I am ready to dig into this. This smells so good. Cabbage is nice and tender. Let's plate it up. Okay, here's the cabbage. Mmm. 
Wow, that is so tender and the flavor is amazing. Oh, would you look at that? Oh. So here you have it, corned beef and cabbage in the slow cooker and your house will smell amazing. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you make something similar to these recipes, what do you do? Well, leave your comments down below, I would love to see. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time, bye.